Hey everybody, uh, Jim back here with uh, a little uh, project that I did uh, last night. Um, this is my, uh, I know I showed the car, my, this model car in a, another video a while back. This is uh, Steve Kinzer, uh, Bass Pro Shops World of Outlaw Sprint Car that I made. But um, I just uh, decided since there's no model building going on at the time, I was going to make a little diorama for it. Uh, as far as a little dirt track diorama, and that's what I came up with. Um, we got the uh, the old dirt track with all the dirt thrown up against the walls. These uh, cars are famous for. Um, they got my fencing, a little bit of the um, the outside of the track, the little bermed up uh, ground uh, that they do at a lot of these uh, small dirt tracks where they um, do up the clay. So uh, this is my um, what I'm calling my little uh, Saturday night dirt track special uh, diorama. So. Um, as you know, Saturday nights are, uh, are racing nights across the country at all your small local tracks and all that. And a lot of them are still the old dirt clay, whatever whatever you call it like that. So um, pretty much uh, just uh, cut up some boards, made the retaining wall, the outer wall. Um, I used ground cover, Woodland Scenics ground cover that I had laying around from different projects for my um, my dirt. And we'll explain how I achieved the, uh, the color and all the look and all that. And... Um, did my fence with uh, fiberglass window screen. Used uh, some plastic uh, tubing for my um, uh, fence posts, and um, did the little bit of the um, outside of the track. A lot of tracks where they got they got like dirt built up against the walls. A lot of times, like in the turns or the back stretch, being that there's no seating, so um, I kind of went that route too. Um, just used uh, like I said the woodland scenic ground cover. So. Um, but all in all, I think it turned out pretty cool. It's a nice little uh, little display for my uh, sprint car and all that. And um, I think it gives it adds, adds a lot of realism to the model and stuff. There you got your uh, your dirt with my overspray on the wall with the same color that I used on the ground cover. Um, splattered up on the wall. You, you know, like you said, I said, for those of you who are familiar with going to these kind of races, um, there's dirt flying all over the place. The walls get pretty filthy from dirt flying up and hitting them and stuff to spray. And you know, the, most of the times, this is like a mixture of dirt and clay, mostly clay. And they wet it down, so I got that little uh, glossy finish to it and stuff, just like it's wet down clay at the beginning of the night when they start racing. And it's pretty slick in the groove area where the cars are driving. And they throw all the clumps of dirt up against the wall and stuff. So I think I kind of achieved that look pretty good on this uh, little diorama. So... I'm going to take the car off, give you guys a better look at the diorama and all that. And um, basically what I use is uh, just the Woodland Scenics ground cover and uh, all that. Just I use some flat grassy effect down here for the texture and a little bit coarser up here in that. And um, it's like, you know, in the groove area, it's a little smoother, although uh, with some clumps of dirt here and there. You know, that's, that's common on a dirt track. And then for the clumps thrown up against the wall from the cars uh, slinging it off their tires, I just used a bigger, chunkier uh, ground foam and um, spread it on there until I was happy with it. And then um, glued it all down. And uh, we'll get into uh, how I glue my uh, ground cover down in a, in, a, in, a, in a short few. And then um, pretty much the, the, the fencing I just made out of, like I said, the plastic shapes, uh, the tubing. Uh, kind of appropriate size for the scale. This is 124th scale. And um, I put the uh, little bend in them, just heated them up and gave them the bend. And uh, I used uh, some fiberglass screening scrap that I had laying around that you use for uh, window repair. And then I used uh, some of my magnet wire, a little bit larger di diameter for like some of the retaining wires that hold the fencing in place and give it some extra, uh, some extra strength and stuff. And then in the back, I just did uh, a lot of tracks that I visited through the years. Uh, some of them, they you know they got seats all the way around. Other ones are built kind of like out in um, out in a uh, secluded, like a secluded, not not as much a populated area. And a lot of times, what they do on small tracks and even some of the super speedways is, you know, they've got um, where the track's sunken down and they berm up all the um, ground behind the walls, the outer outside of the walls. And then, uh, you know, you got your grass covering weeds and stuff like that. So I kind of went for that effect, and I think it turned out pretty good. And um, I'm going to spin her back around. So um, 
a little bit about how I do my ground cover. I um, learned uh, years ago. I was in uh, to model railroading back in the uh, in the in the 80s and all that, since late 70s, early 80s, mid 80s, late late 80s. I used to do um, HO model railroading, and I used to do all my own. Um, I used to build layouts, and I had a few of them with the mountains and the rivers and the streams and the waterfalls, the bridges over canyons and stuff. Most of it was modeled on um, kind of Denver type, uh, Colorado type uh, scenery, like the old Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. And um, uh, I used I used to you know most of my uh, weathering and my uh, ground cover and my scratch building techniques come from the days back then because I used to do a lot of scratch building as far as rolling stock structures and stuff like that. So um, basically, with this woodland scenic ground cover, it's you know it's, it's just fine fine powder or pieces of foam for the bigger stuff and that ground up. And uh, basically, what I learned back then a little trick that we used in model railroading was you didn't you didn't spread glue on the surface and glue it down what you did was spread all your ground cover and um you know naturally when you spread it over a glued surface and the glue dries whatever is not glued down is going to blow off and sometimes you might end up with bare spots or that so um a little technique i picked up back in the day of model railroading was we take um elmer's glue just plain old elmer's white glue you know it's pretty cheap and inexpensive and uh, we mix it in a spray, spray bottle, about two-thirds glue to uh, one-quarter water, uh, two-thirds two, two glue to one-third water, and then uh, put a couple drops of uh, any kind of dishwasher detergent, wash, dishwashing detergent will work, okay? Um, what the dishwashing detergent does, it helps the, the glue in the in mixture to kind of... Um, to soak, soak, soak into the ground cover a little bit easier. It makes it more, more like, a, almost like an oily where, where it, where it kind of uh, soaks in better and it doesn't all sit on top and dry like a, like a hard shell. And what you get is um, everything's glued down. You don't have no loose uh, ground cover, nothing. Everything's pretty stuff, stiff and, and hard when you touch it. But at the same time, it still has the texture that you, you had before it was even glued down and stuff. And I did the same thing back there. I just spread my different colors and textures and I spray over it and let the glue dry. And then a lot of times what, what we do, which I did on this, I gave everything a coat of um, of uh, clear uh, flat, like a matte finish and stuff. And um, that's how I got the color. And when I glued down all my um, foam textures for my, uh, my uh, clay, clay surface, I just uh, sprayed it all. Um, I had to give it several coats because the foam likes to so it'll soak it up. And that, I just gave everything what I used was a Walmart um, Rust-Oleum color. It's called Nutmeg. It's kind of like that uh, brownish uh, tan earth color. And uh, it, it pretty much resembles clay, um, a clay color like, like they use on the, a lot of these dirt tracks. So that's how I came up with my diorama and all that, how I made it and everything. And... Um, I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out and uh, all that. And I think it makes for a nice little display. We'll toss our little dirt car back up there and uh, all that and get a couple more shots of her. And um, I think it turned out great also. You can look at it from the back and it kind of gives it a little bit more realistic with the, with the earth in, in, in front of it and all that. You look through the fence just like you're sitting at the track watching the races and stuff. So um, pretty much... Uh, that's that's her uh i think uh i think it i think it makes a real nice display and all that and uh um thanks for watching thanks for checking out Ho hope you guys like it it was a nice little one evening fun project and stuff and all that and um it gives me something more to display my car rather than just putting on a shelf all by yourself and everything so uh till the next time uh, you guys all have a good one. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for uh, the, hitting the like button. Thanks for all your great comments. And thanks for checking out my videos. Uh, all you guys uh, want to get into diorama building. It's fun and simple. And uh, if you got any questions about it, feel free to leave in my comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And all. And uh, till the next time, guys all have a good one. And uh, happy modeling. Take care. Bye.